and a lot of times they are also used to hold static data we do a lot of uh, tree traversals we have to be cautious about whether it's a pre-order in order hello everybody my name is Karov and welcome to 100 GB where I talk about a lot of things related to software engineering technology career and a few other things which I care about so today in this video I'm gonna be answering this very simple question do you use data structures in your day job as a software engineer well I, I will be answering that question as an experienced engineer so the most basic data structures lists and arrays so I use them day in and day out throughout the entire spectrum of the work I do or I have done in the past so I've heavily used them in uh, front-end back-end uh, mobile development and the Android framework as well. All the related concepts like insertion, deletion, mappings and even the modern way of manipulating lists which is the functional programming like Java streams is heavily used like in, in almost any kind of software you write. <clears throat> hey, by the way, I'm classifying mobile as uh, separate from the front end and the back end because when you think about mobile you uh, think about being offline caching data so you have this data layer thing uh, we'll consider front end to be to include any kind of front end mobile desktop website whatever and mobile will be just the data layer or the logic part of it nowadays we actually don't implement them from scratch we generally use uh, whatever is available in the framework we are using so second link list I'd say I barely use them. I don't remember if I have ever used them in my job or while building software. The related concepts like adding an element into a linked list or a double linked list or removing an element. So those are hot topics for the interview, but not really used. But all in all, the related concepts might be uh, good to just know about. So third, hash sets or hash maps. Well, I use them moderately across the entire spectrum again. Mostly those are used wherever uniqueness is required in the code. And uniqueness is actually required like throughout the UI, the backend, uh, anywhere you can think of and a lot of times they are also used to hold static data so for example you are building a chat application where you have uh, various types of messages and for every type of message you have to uh, you have for every message type you want to store the maximum message size in bytes or kbs for example you can have uh, 200 sorry 2 mbs for jpeg and 200 kbs for text whatever so this kind of information can actually go in immutable maps so that you can actually quickly uh, get them given a particular message type. So fourth, stacks. So I've used stacks a few times, not actually implemented it because whenever you have to use it in some kind of games or whatever, you actually just use uh, the data structure stacks, which is available in almost every language, I guess. But quite a few times, we write recursive code. Even in our production code, we do write like recursive functions and when we talk about recursive functions inherently we are using the system stack so it is indeed widely used so fifth queues well yes queues are used heavily wherever queuing is required so first in threading and synchronization especially uh, there is this very famous data structure called blocking queues which is used like throughout the entire spectrum in front end mobile apps back end everywhere second back end has queuing everywhere be it databases be it publisher subscriber mechanisms be it processing jobs be it crunching numbers any any kind of work you have to do in back end involves queues six trees so i i'd say i haven't used the red black trees avl trees uh, or the binary search trees directly but I, I, I've heard that red black trees are used in database implementations. So I know those are used over there, but not I haven't used those directly. But as far as k array trees are concerned, as in where uh, it's not a binary tree, a uh, node can have multiple children. You actually see that everywhere, especially in the UI frameworks. Like if we talk about Android, the entire window hierarchy and the view hierarchy is in this tree, k array tree structure. And we do a lot of uh, tree traversals we have to be cautious about whether it's a pre-order in order or post order you got the gist it's used heavily so the last and the very famous data structure graphs yes i have used them a lot so actually graphs and trees are in some form used uh, interchangeably i haven't used graphs as is but the concepts like nodes bfs tfs those are heavily used especially again in the ui frameworks so be it android's window manager or flutter's rendering or react's rendering 
uh, they internally use a lot of graph algorithms so for example if you're working on on android you have uh, you have home screen of your app and there is this widget which can change and in order for it to actually change or animate it'll have to invalidate its view hierarchy it invalidates itself the parent knows that something has changed in my subtree and then we uh, do some sort of traversals to update that particular area in the screen uh, so yeah a lot of data structures are involved there and actually those traversals are in some form those are dfs and also i i have a very concrete example of how i use graphs a few years back so i was building this feedback uh, form where uh, we had a lot of questions which were coming from the backend database and there were a, a few relational questions as well uh, like if there's uh, i'll give you a concrete example yeah so i had a few relational questions uh, as in there were some questions which won't be in the form and they will only appear when a certain uh, answer for a certain question is selected so let's say i have question one uh, that has uh, so it's a multiple choice all 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 questions are multiple choice uh, questions so it has these three options now in the data i know that there's this q2 and q3 these are relational questions q2 should be displayed when question one's answer one is selected and Q3 should be displayed when, let's say, question two's answer two is selected. So uh, let's say in the UI, uh, the user selected answer one, which means now we need to show question two as well. So we showed question two. Now for question two, we have uh, multiple options. Now let's say the user selected answer two, which means now we need to display question three as well now on the user screen we have uh, all three questions and the answer one for question one is selected right now the interesting thing is that for question one if that user now unselects answer one and instead selects answer two then ideally what should happen is we should be able to remove question three and question two both because question one's answer one is not selected anymore question two should go away and since question, question two has gone away question three doesn't need to be there altogether so this kind of thing was implemented this kind of logic was implemented using uh, dfs what uh, i used to do is the moment a particular option is unselected this this kind of represents an adjacency list how graphs are implemented i can see for q1's a1 what all questions are there and again, for those questions, what all sub questions are there? I'm, I'm not sure if you can get a feel of what I'm trying to say, but yeah, this is the crux. And yeah, that was all about all the data structures. And there are a lot of other concepts related to strings and everything that are actually used in our day jobs, but that those are for some other video. But as for this video, uh, that's all. This was it. I hope you liked it. And if you ask me why this video, I, I so I have been getting a lot of questions again okay, this this question <laughs> and even when i was back in my college and school i used to think that are these data structures even required in my day job will i be even using them in the first place but yeah i, I guess this video gives you a feel that that software engineering doesn't really exist without data structures and that is why those are very important yeah don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already Bye-bye.